Chemical Kinetics, Part 4, More Rate Laws, and Nuclear Kinetics. In this video, we will study kinetics and use rate laws for reactions with multiple reactants. We will also look at the kinetics of radioactive decay. It can sometimes be difficult to study the kinetics of multi-reactant reactions, but it can be simplified using the initial rate method or by observing the behavior of one reactant at a time. If the concentration of one of the reactants is much smaller than the others, then the larger concentrations are relatively constant throughout the course of the reaction. They can then be rolled into a constant we'll call the pseudo-rate constant in order to find K, the actual rate constant. Let's look at an example. For this reaction in which bromate, bromide, and hydrogen ions react to form bromine in water, we can determine the rate law to be shown to be what it is shown here. It is first order with respect to bromate and bromide, but it's second order with respect to the hydrogen ion. Perhaps graphical methods and the integrated rate laws were used to determine the order of each reactant, but now we need to find the rate constant, K. If the reaction occurs with very large bromide and hydrogen ion concentrations compared to bromate, then those concentrations would be approximately constant. As a result, the rate law could be simplified to K prime times the bromate concentration, where K prime is the rate constant K times the initial concentrations of bromide times the square of the initial concentration of hydrogen ion. If we plotted the natural log of bromate concentration versus time, we would get a linear plot, but the slope wouldn't give us the true value for the rate constant K. Instead, it would give us the pseudo rate constant K prime. But with that value, we can substitute and solve to find the rate constant K. One of the most studied types of kinetics is that of the spontaneous nuclear decay that radioisotopes undergo. This type of decay is always first order decay, so we can apply all the rate laws and equations for first order chemical reactions to nuclear decay reactions. Typically, in these equations, we use a capital N to represent either the concentration or the number of radioactive isotopes. Notice that in the expression for the half-life, the N does not appear because there's no concentration dependence to the half-life, just as there wasn't with first-order chemical reactions. You may also recall that unlike chemical reactions, nuclear reactions do not have any temperature dependence. This makes the rate constant and the half-life extremely useful for radiocarbon dating and other applications. Thanks for watching this brief video. Be sure to review it and the appropriate pages in your textbook for further clarification on these topics. Leave a comment if you have any questions.